Hey guys, in this video I'm going to be showing you a trailer music walkthrough of my track Tomb, which was featured in the trailer for The Outsiders. So here we have um, this beast that is called Tomb. Uh, this was part of Elephant Music's Throat 4 album, um, Throat being you know, a hugely successful series from Elephant Music, which is, uh, I'm very blessed to say, is almost entirely me. Um, and here we have it. Here is my track. Um, <clears throat> now, before I walk through this this uh, landscape, I want to give you a little bit of a, uh, an idea of what was happening uh, and how we got to this point. Now, uh, Throat 2 and 3 have been almost exclusively cellos. Um, you know, obviously there are other things like drums and things like that, but uh, the, ba the basically the organic sounds and the uh, signature sounds were created up in cellos. Now, moving into this throat four, uh, Vic, uh, Elephant Music was like, Rich, uh, why don't we try throat singing? So what happened was so I was like, okay, yeah, throat singing could work. It's a bit uh, geographical, uh, you know, as in like you hear a throat singer, you immediately hear, think of Tibet and the Far East um, and the limitations of the instrument are fairly obvious um, to me anyway. Uh, so I st what I did was uh, whilst before we booked a singer, um, I started creating everything using my voice because I was kind of like, oh, is that the brief? Uh, so I started doing everything using my voice, uh, which is as you can see up here, I've got whistle harmonics, which is how I start the track. Um, me whistling. I've got a bit of a pitch shift going on with octaves in a, uh, a uh, reverb. Um, so I, I started sort of creating this track based around... I mean, that was pretty much all I had, if I remember rightly. I think I had some... I still used the cello and the violin, and I, I think it was kind of like this stuff. Uh, the violin rake. And then I had some other ideas come in. Um, namely this. Which is me just going boom, boom into uh, into the mic with a pitch shifter, uh, and then putting it through some delay. Uh, and we had a couple of other things like this: these whistle risers going on. So I'm basically just trying to mimic everything as much as I can with what I have, which is my mouth, my violin, and my cello, which is in another room. Um, uh, and then we got to the recording and we got this guy called Ilya who uh, did specialised in not just sort of Tibetan throat singing but throat whistling and uh, you know he was a, a metal singer as far as I'm aware but he was very interested in world music uh, so we got him doing other things which was namely like these uh, buams. Obviously what I did was when if I can take this off. There we go. You can hear his voice there. Uh, so all sorts of Brahms, which I've affected because when it was all voice, it was so heavily voiced that we thought that it would sort of reduce the placeability of the track. Um, so I ch tended to treat them differently so that we could... So that they didn't sound so vocal, at least, uh, you know. Um... So then what I did was I, I we basically I, we went to it and I just said, OK, I, I've got these um, violin things going on here. Yeah. And I was like, can you just repeat that, please? But with your voice. So he, we he, he started we, we started making up these things. Often when I do a recording session with uh, uh, musicians, I will have an idea of what they, I want them to do. But I will also sort of, whilst I'm listening, I will then say, okay, try this, and then they'll try it, or they'll come up with their own ideas. And sort of, it was quite a natural process. It's, it's yeah, it's good fun. Um, 
so then, I, you know, obviously I took the recordings we did and I then shaped it up to about here. Uh, so, you know, this is what I kind of essentially got up to. So you can hear all of these string elements. Uh, you know, the way throat works is it's very loop-based writing. Um, and that's why I love it, because you're essentially what you're doing is you're writing a loop and then you're gradually spreading it out. So you can see the, the, the cue, I'm gradually introducing elements one by one, that which then essentially loop until a point. Oops. Um, and it's great because it's just textures and rhythms. But it works so well for trailers because trailers are looking for this tension building. And that's the really key part here, building tension. So many of my students and I think uh, other aspiring composers fail to see the importance of simplicity. You don't have to have a big idea. You just have to know how to spread that idea and build upon that idea. Um, you know, because essentially this was my idea. And then I'll just have this. Okay, let's. I'm recording these sounds, and then I'm just doubling the speed of the sounds, adding trailer Brahms in there as well, um, and then obviously to help bring my cue along, I use my own um, riser instrument that I've created, which is available on um, on the Trailer Music School, where you can you can uh, purchase this, um, or if you're a member, you get it for free. Uh, so I, I use these to add to the extra riser sounds, you know. Great fun. <laughs> Love a riser. Uh, and I, I want to point something out to you. It's 2 minutes 30 and I haven't used a drum or a drum sample. Okay, I tell a lie. I use these ones. This is all I've used so far. Because the trailers I'm aiming for aren't massive, huge sounding trailers. They are usually small character films, uh, like thrillers or horrors. So there's only one or two or three or four. There's a small ensemble cast. So you don't need this whole huge sounding cinematic thing. And that's the important thing to bear in mind when you're writing your music. Writing. When you're writing your music, you need to think about the end point. And this point is... Freaky, weird, thriller, scary, uncomfortable, horror. You know. Something's terribly wrong. Uh, and then we got to this point and I, I didn't know what to do. So I fell back on one of my favourite things to do, which is, in my final third, add a change. And that change is usually a change in tempo. And I did something slightly different with this one. I did a tempo increase. So obviously, final third, huge risers. And then it's just a huge drum build. Now this is at least a minute longer than most of my trailer cues uh, because I found myself just getting into it and the tension just kept building and building and building. And before I realized it, it was, you know, three and a half minutes long, uh, which is epic. You may have noticed my drums were, were out of time a little bit. That's because my uh, computer's struggling to screencast and to play the files, which is, you know, a sign that maybe I need a new computer. Hmm? Some might say yes. Um, so the reason I'm showing you this is because of a couple of things. Uh, in the Trailer Music School, we've been working on, uh, this is me and the members, have been working on 
uh, recording our own sounds uh, and then finding a way to make those sounds grow and grow and grow to build tension. And this track really exemplifies that. You know, it's voices, it's a cello and a violin. That's essentially, I mean, some of the sounds. That's me. It's me making noises with my mouth, you know. Uh, and you don't need those big sample libraries to do that. Yes, I use the drum libraries at the end, but I only use the drum libraries at the end. I didn't use huge string libraries or anything like that. Um, so what if I mean? I mean, I could probably have got away with just having... Uh, oh, I've got LA Modern Percussion there, Hans Zimmer, uh, Spitfire stuff, um, 8 DOs, Clocks, um, and Albion. Uh, I could probably take the Albion out, but, uh, you know, usually on three albums, I only use the Hans Zimmer Percussion, because, or at least almost entirely the Hans Zimmer Percussion. So, you know, get yourself a good drum library. That's important. Because then you get, have the chance to get this realistic, epic drive, driving percussion, which is very useful in trailer music. But admittedly, that stuff wasn't used. It was this. This stuff was the, what was used in the trailer. It was all this intimate, weird stuff sounding, sounding stuff that I recorded myself. And you can do this too. You don't need to fret over, you know, which library do I by, you know, uh, I've, I've got seven string libraries, but I just don't feel like they're doing the right thing for me. If you're feeling that, find a way to change completely, you know. Maybe you don't need to do that, or maybe just hire a musician. Spend, what, 50 quid uh, for, for a couple of hours of, or even a single hour, whatever, how much they're charging, um, to record some lines over your string libraries, and it will just lift your track. And this is why I think the throat stuff is so successful, because it's it's real, it's organic, and it's intimate. And because it's me playing, it's usually badly played and out of time, uh, which for thrillers and horrors works like a charm, you know. Uh, but the point is, I took minimal ideas with minimal sound palettes, and those limitations became the force to drive the compositional process. I thought, okay, well, I don't, I don't want to use horns, so how do I do that? Okay, I don't want to get. I don't want to use trillion. So what do I do? Boop, boop, boop with the pitch shifter. Um, okay, admittedly I use a cello and violin, but you don't have to do that. You could use a guitar. There's nothing to say. You could just crack out a guitar. Um, find find what limitations you have, and see if you can completely strip back your compositional process and learn how to build on a single idea, be it a single rhythm, uh, a single chord, uh, a single progression take those limitations and make them your strengths. Um, I'd, I'd like to say, I think that's what I've done with the Throat albums. Uh, anyway, I do hope you enjoyed this tutorial and this walkthrough. Um, I certainly did. Uh, if you did, please click like and subscribe to the channel. And if you want to learn more about writing for trailers, then head on over to the Trailer Music School and join us. Thanks, guys.